Over the course of a 35-year career, Melissa Etheridge has won two Grammys, an Oscar, and sold more than 13 million albums here in these United States. She's also, of course, become a well-known and outspoken political and social activist. And now she's sharing her story in a memoir called Talking to My Angels and a show on Broadway called Melissa Etheridge, My Window. Let's take a quick look at a clip from that show of Etheridge performing one of her biggest hits, I Want to Come Over. And Melissa Etheridge joins us now. Uh, how many standing ovations did you get at the yeah. one? I, was, oh, I mean, three, four. As soon as you came out, people were like, oh, we can start the show. I mean, it's a Don't, great show. Aren't standing ovations just exhausting? Oh, it's, 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 it's all, no, I'll take it. I'll take it. I love it. It's awesome. It's I mean, been people, amazing. people love this show. As you say, it's so dramatic. But it's yeah. also very funny, and you get the backstory to your songs. When did you realize that you were able to write this as a memoir, but also perform it as mm. a show? Well, I think um, I think during the pandemic, you know, we all had a time to really kind of it, it reflect, and and it was a good time for me to reflect on my life, everything I'd done, and and you know things were happening, so um, I, I realized, wow, I really want to tell my story again. I I wrote a book, yeah. you know, years ago for the for the first you know quarter of my life, and and so much has happened, and I've learned so much, and and um, realizing that my life. Is, is, is more my art now than, mm. than just, you know, just my passions or desires, but it's the whole thing. And so I just started telling a story and helped by telling the book and then, then taking that and, and making the show from it. It, it all just worked out. Yeah. You said from drama comes great uh, great <laughs> songs and you've had a lot of drama. One of the most powerful moments when you talk about Beckett's death, your son's death, you know, the lights go down and it's just a, a silhouette spotlight of you. I wonder how you're able to do that night after night. I, I also wondered that. Yeah. You, I wonder how you're able to do that. Well, I, when I wrote that, part of my life has been very open. Yeah. And I have, I have chosen to be truthful and share what has happened in my life. From, Why did you from, want to share that, though, something that's so painful? That's because I, I find great healing in it, okay. mm. in, in taking it off of me, because losing a child, especially to opioid addiction that way, is you, take on, you can take on so much guilt and shame. Yes. And that was like poison to me. And I already knew before that happened that that, that, can, that could make me sick. I, I had already been through cancer and understood yeah. the stress on that. So I, the greatest way for me to get it out is to, is to state every night, my son would want me to be happy. Mm. This, the, and, and, and take it and believe it. And I go home with that belief and I sleep, my son would want me to be happy. Yeah. So this is what I'm gonna yeah. do. Yeah, you talk about um, being honest and, and living in your truth, which you have done for, let's say, decades now. <laughs> I believe being truthful is the hardest thing humans try to do. And you do it um, fearlessly. Uh, why did you decide early on in your career to come out in a time where it wasn't necessarily accepted. There were stakes. As much on a, there grand, were stakes. Sca on there, a grand scale. Yeah. Absolutely, because it, 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 there came a point where as a, as a musician, as a songwriter, I, I wanted people to, if they're enjoying the music, to know where it came from. I didn't want to portray something and then have all the, all the reward go to that, let oh. me feel empty. And mm. so after, it was my fourth album, that I finally said, look, I, I have to step up. And if people are gonna stop listening to the music because I'm gay, then they're not listening to the music. But were you afraid to come out? Because it could have been a big business decision that could have gone totally the other way for you. Um, you know, or were you like, and was there some conflict? Sure, there was some unknown. They actually, no. People say, you know, did it, did it hurt you? And, and I went from selling under a million uh, records, an al you know, an album, to over six million, seven million <laughs> records. Well, I, on that point, <laughs> Melissa, I, I really wanted to, I mean, so there's a moment in the, in the show where you talk about being signed and uh, the agent who signed you or, the, or, or uh, said the future of rock and roll is a female face or has a female face. And that's true. That's historically true. 
Uh, and then Jan Wenner recently has a book <laughs> called The Masters, right? Oh. About rock and roll interviews, the greats. No women, no women. Women apparently not articulate enough, mm. not significant enough. Mm. Did, do you have a missed call from Jan? Like, what's going on? How do you feel <laughs> yes, about this? A missed no, call from Jan. <laughs> that has to bother you. Yeah. It, okay. The Yes, of course it bothers me in a way that it's it's sad. It, and it, it, it actually, a, a little bit of it, it set me free. Because I used to get a little tortured by the uh, the mainstream rock and roll media huh. and, and how they didn't. Pay, you know, it was always the last thing or not included, or it was all these guys. It was all the guys, all the white guys, all the white guys. And then it's like, oh, now I get it because the mainstream rock media was all white guys, okay? Mm. And so I understand that that's not where my legacy is. I'm not looking to them to give me a legacy anymore. So talk about legacy. Myself. I know you like the Kansas City Chiefs. No. Are, you on board? Are you on board with Taylor and, and Travis? What do you think? I swear, my house has, uh, the two, any given day, there's two things in my house we're talking about, Chiefs or Taylor Swift, <laughs> right? So when that came together, it was like, wow, my worlds have collided. This is crazy. Yes. I love it. I love the attention she's brought to. I, I've loved football all my life and I've enjoyed it. Have. Yes. So I just love that she's there. And, and Travis is a wonderful human being. Yeah. He's great. Yeah. Yeah. He really is. Any given Sunday, Melissa Etheridge, thank you very much. My great pleasure, to have you here. Thank you. All right, uh, Melissa, Melissa Etheridge, my window is on Broadway. Broadway right now. It's terrific. I'm sending my cousin. You should go too. We're going to send Jan your number. <laughs> <laughs> and talking to Angels, her book is on sale wherever you like to buy your books.